Varda is a Veli who is the wife of Mamwe. Of all the Velera, it is she whom the elves honor and love the most, and they will call upon her name when plunged into darkness. Varda knew every inch of the borders of Aya, she rejoiced in the light, and her face was beautiful beyond all words. Her face shone with the light of Elivida. At the time of Mirko's first creation of dissonance, Varda saw through his mind and despised him for it. Of all the Vila, it was Varda that Mirko hated and feared the most. When Manwe and Mirko were at war over Arda, Varda came from the depths of Aie to help Manwe. In the spring of Arda, she made two great lamps shine. She lived with Manwe in Ilmarin and helped him govern Arda. With her help, Manwe was able to see farther than all the other beings of Arda, and while with Manwe, she was able to hear voices in every corner of the world. In Vareniar, she collected the dew of the twin sacred trees in a well and created new stars from the dew of Telperion, the elder of the twin trees, for the awakening of the elves. She infused the elven diamonds with divine light after Fenor created them. She raised the sun and the moon. At the end of the first age, she caused Ajarendal to rise as a star. Yavanna is a veli. She is known as the queen of the earth, the giver of all fruits, and governs all that grows. She is the sister of Vanna, the wife of Ali, and Beauty and in Maya is her kinswoman. She often appears as a lady in green. In the chorus of Ainu, Yavanna sings of the dense foliage of the ancient trees, which are nourished by the rains that fall from Mamwe and Omu. It is said that this was the first thought that gave birth to the shepherd of the hundred trees. Her thoughts met those of Manwe and brought forth the great eagle, the master of the west. In the beginning of the world, Yavanna planted the first seed in Arda and looked after everything that grew. As Morgoth continually went about destroying her beloved creations, she stood against him and fought him all the way. After Morgoth was banished from Arda, Yavanna planted the seed of her creation, and life came to Arda in the spring, though at first no flowers bloomed. After the destruction of the twin lamps, much of the life of Arda fell asleep once more until the rising of the sun and moon. After the destruction of the twin lamps, Vila retreated to Amen continent and created Velenor. On the green hills of Ezelohar, Yavanna sits and begins to sing while the other Vera listen in silence. Out of her song in Nina's tears was born the twin sacred tree, her greatest creation. However, Yavanna did not forsake the lands of the middle continent. She traveled there from time to time to heal the wounds caused by Morgoth and to welcome the awakening of the elves. After Ilivida allowed the existence of the dwarves, creatures of Ali, Yavanna feared that they would cut down all the trees in mid-continent. She thus confided in Manwe and asked if she could create creatures that would protect the forest. Manwe communicated her concerns to Ilivida, who agreed that she should create the Shepherd of the Hundred Trees, the Ents of the Lord of the Rings. After the elves built Tyrion, Yavanna gave them the White Tree Galahirian, created in the form of Telperion. After the destruction of the twin sacred trees, Yavanna realized that only the light of the elven diamonds could heal them. However, Fenor flatly refused. So, with Nina's help, they caused Telperion to bloom its last silver flower and Lauren to bear its last golden fruit. Her husband, Ollie, made the ships that could carry them, which were the sun and the moon. Andur, the land of gifts, was given to the humans to settle, as they had helped the armies of Vila in the War of Wrath. Asi raised the land, Oryk shaped it, and Yavanna made it fertile. The Edenites came here and founded Numenar. Nina is a Veli. She was a sister of Narmu and Ermu and was well versed in grief and mourning. She often mourned for the destruction that had befallen Arda. And those who were fortunate enough to hear her eulogies gained wisdom and learned to endure with hope. Her temple was located far to the west, on the edge of the world, near the temple of Mandus. When she opened the windows of her dwelling and looked out, she could see beyond the walls of the world. She lived alone, and seldom traveled to the city of Velimar, which was full of laughter and joy. She often went to the temple of her elder brother, Mandus, where the souls who waited there cried out to her, and she comforted and counseled them. Maya Orolin, who later traveled to the mid-continent under the name of Gandalf, used to learn much from her. Nina was involved in the creation of the twin sacred trees. She wept above the green hills of Ezekiel Ohar and nourished it with her tears. 
After Mirko destroyed the twin trees, she wept over their remains and washed away the filth of Ugoliant and caused them to bear their final fruits and flowers, the sun and moon of the afterlife. Nina is compassionate. She chose to grant forgiveness to Mirko when he asked for Vera's forgiveness. Even though Mirko had committed many crimes, Nina decided to give him a chance to repent. Veri is a member of the Veli and the wife of Mandus. Her name means Weaver in Quenya, and she is known for weaving the stories and history of the world. She uses her beautiful tapestries to depict all the events that take place in the world of Eru Ilyavator, including the deeds of the beings, the will of the gods, and the changes in the world. Her tapestries are not only beautiful works of art, but also important historical records that can help people understand the origins and development of the world. Vyri is described as a wise and compassionate goddess. Her knowledge of the world is unrivaled and she has always been committed to preserving and disseminating historical knowledge. The tapestry she wove not only adorned the halls of Mandus, but was a precious gift that recorded the history and civilization of Middle-earth. After Fenway's death, his wife Mira was resurrected by the Manduses and sent to serve Vary. Mira's duty was to record the deeds of the Fenway family and weave them into the tapestry of Vyri. Miril has a deep affection for the Fenway family, and she dutifully records their stories in hopes of preserving their memories forever. Vary and Mire are very close, and they share a commitment to preserving and spreading historical knowledge. Vyri's wisdom and Miril's loyalty made them faithful recorders of Middle-earth's history. Yvanna is one of the Velas, the sister of Yvanna and the wife of Alami. She is the god of spring, flowers, and nature, and is known to the Vera as Vanna to Ivana, the bringer of spring. Vanna is a beautiful goddess who lives in a garden full of golden flowers and often travels to the forest with her husband Alami. All the flowers come back to life as she walks by and bloom as she watches, flocks of birds sing at her arrival. In Fairy Diamond, Vanna is described as a goddess of vigor and joy. She loves nature and works to protect and maintain the ecology of Middle-earth. Her presence brings life and beauty to Middle-earth. Vanna's main responsibility was to be in charge of spring and flowers. She is responsible for awakening the sleeping earth and reviving everything. She was also in charge of the forests and grasslands, protecting the natural world. Vanna is a kind and loving goddess who lives in peace with all living things. She loved life and worked to preserve the natural harmony of Middle-earth. Vanna and Alami were a loving couple who worked together to protect and maintain the ecology of Middle-earth. Alami is the god of hunting and animals, and he is responsible for protecting the living creatures of the forest. Vanna and Alami work with each other to maintain the natural order of Middle-earth. It was Vanna and Esti that Maya Miriam served before she traveled to Middle-earth. Another Maya, Arion, was responsible for guarding Vanna's garden before being chosen to pilot the ship of the sun. In the earliest stories, Vanna, and Alami have a daughter named Mialiki. <music> Esther is a Veli. She is the wife of Ilmu, and she is able to heal all wounds and relieve all weariness. She often lounges in the daytime on an island in the shade of Lake Rahurim, dressed in a gray dress. Together with her husband, Ilmu, Lord of Dreams, Esther resides in the gardens of Lorelin, the most beautiful in the world. There, many Maya served the couple. Even Vila comes to their abode to take a nap, in order to temporarily unload the burden of managing Arda. In the Elven Diamond, Esther is described as a gentle and kind goddess. She is always quietly helping those in need, bringing comfort and healing to them. After Varda created the sun and the moon, she wanted them to be high in the sky at the same time, but Esther and Ermu objected. If they did, the world would have no time to sleep or rest, and the stars would not be visible. Because of their proposal, Varda finally decided to let the sun and moon rise in turn. The Queen of Singa, Lucian's mother, Miriam, was a Maya maid under Esther's command. Nessa is a Veli, who is the wife of Tokus and sister of Alami. She was the god of swiftness, known for her agility and graceful dancing. 
Her name means young in Quenya. Nessa is a beautiful and graceful goddess who runs as fast as an arrow and can easily leave behind any deer that follows her. She was a great dancer and danced in the evergreen meadows of Elamar. Nessa is a goddess full of life. Her speed and dance symbolize youth and vitality, and she brings joy and life to Velima. Nessa's main duty is to rule over speed and dance. She is the guardian of all sports and races, and the symbol of all that is alive and vibrant in nature. Nessa and Tokus are a loving couple who together represent strength and vigor. Tokus is the god of strength, who possesses infinite power and courage. Nessa's speed and dance complemented Tokus' strength, and together they guarded Velimar and Middle-earth.